Hey everybody, it's Crystal. <laughs> um, first, I just want to say how sorry I am that I have taken so long to make a video. Um, life has been really, really busy and I just did not have time. <laughs> did not have time. Have not had time and have been tired. So, um, the last video that I made, the boys were two months. It was their two month update and now they're three months officially today. So, um, so here I am to make a three month video update for them and I, um, I put some notes on my phone so that I would remember what to say and so that I wouldn't make the video super long and, and then go, oh crap, I didn't put that in there, I didn't put that in there, that kind of thing. So um, first, I just want to say last time on their two-month update, I had talked about how Ronan was about to have a sonogram on his hip, or no, he did have a sonogram on his hip, and then um, we were going to go and see the orthopedic sur or orthopedic doctor, pediatrician person. Um, and so we did do that. Um, let me see. Yeah, we, we saw the orthopedic doctor who was really, really great. Um, everybody at the children's hospital was just amazing. I have to say from the time we got to the front door to checking in to the nurses to everybody was just fantastic. So um, they said that his hip is fine. Um, they don't feel like it's anything um, that we should be concerned about. It was so minimal that they don't think it's really hip dysplasia. They just call it immaturity of the bone. Um, <clears throat> and so they are going to have him do one more sonogram right before he is four months old. So like right at the, actually it's like the first week of May. Um, so he'll have one more sonogram just to make sure that it is in fact okay and that it's not staying where it was. So um, I feel really good about that. I'm excited. Um, Sorry, I gotta readjust. I didn't want him to have any sort of issues with the hip, and um, so I feel really good that you know everything looks good. So I'm glad that they did the sonogram. I'm glad that we went. I'm glad that it's not as severe as I was thinking it was going to be. So that makes me really, really happy for him that he's not going to worry about that. Um, speaking of Ronan, he still has lots of eye goop. Um, it's just not going away. Some days it seems like it's gone. And then other days, like, he wakes up and his eyes are just matted shut almost. I feel bad for him. I feel like I'm always picking at his eyes, picking out little eye boogers. I'm, you know, like, trying to get eye stuff off of his eyelashes. Um, I put the medicine on his eyes, and he cries, and he's upset, and it just doesn't seem to be helping. So I really hope it goes away on its own and that we don't have to see an eye specialist for that. But if we do, we do. I mean, it, it is what it is. Um, so, you know, and she said originally that it could take up to six months to go away. So I'm, I'm just hoping that it really, <laughs> that it goes away on its own. Um, I feel bad for him, you know, waking up like that and always just having his eyes messy. Um, as far as Ronan goes, I think that's it. Um, Armour is doing really well too. His eyes are spot on now. I know last video I talked about how he was looking a little cross-eyed. Um, one of his eyes seemed like it wasn't lining up properly, which we read online and asked the doctor and they said that was normal, that usually it can take up to four months for baby's eyes to, um, to get on track. And so he seems to be just fine now. I don't ever look at him and go, oh, is, does he have an eye problem? Um, so I'm, I'm really happy for that, happy for him. Um, they are getting so big seriously it's I just I was just looking at a picture the other day of them when they first got home from the hospital and armor was so tiny and now he's so much bigger it just blows my mind I officially what was it like a week ago two weeks ago two weeks ago now two weeks now I officially put away their newborn clothes well I put away most of their newborn clothes there's actually several onesies that they still fit into um, of the newborn clothes but now we've migrated into the zero to three month and three month clothing and they seem to be just a little big on them but they and of another week or so they're going to be fitting in them just fine so yeah it was kind of bittersweet um, I got rid of a few things I am saving some things um, I don't know how long I'll save them but right now I'm saving them. I just I just can't get rid of everything right away. Um, I felt that way whenever I got rid of the preemie clothes. I kept a couple of the preemie outfits and their preemie um, take-home outfits. And then I got rid of some others. But um, I just can't bring myself to like give them all away yet. I just can't do it. 
Um, so, but yeah, they're getting really big. I think, okay, so at their last appointment, their two month update appointment, excuse me, um, I believe Ronan was 10 pounds, six ounces and armor was nine pounds, 14 ounces, I think. Um, uh, <clears throat> and that was a month ago. So I'm sure they're both like in the 11 pound range. Um, now they don't have another um, appointment until, um, Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. Until May, that'll be their four-month appointment. It's actually like a week after they're four months old. Um, so, yeah, they'll have that another appointment at four months. And then, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. Um, okay, so more of my notes. Um, okay, so they, I think I mentioned this last time. Last time I think I started to say that they were starting to smile. Now they smile every single day. They smile in the morning. They smile at night. They smile when they eat. We can make them smile. Um, and then a couple days ago, officially, officially, Ronan giggled at me when I was, I came home from work one night and fed them and I was just kissing him and snuggling and talking and, you know, being so sweet to him. And he, he giggled at me and I was like, what? And then the very next day, Armor did it. And then the very next day, Armor laughed at me again. And so I finally got Josh to see that he was laughing. And so, oh my, it's so cute. I mean, really, I it made me tearful. I was just like, oh my God, my babies, they're smiling and laughing. So I'm, I am excited for like one of those like gut belly laughs. Um, I can't wait for that to happen or I can't wait until they just like out of nowhere laugh at something that we've done. Um, cause that's how they're smiling now. So it's just, it's so amazing. Ah, God, it just melts my heart. I never thought, I mean, of course I imagined motherhood was going to be amazing, but there was absolutely no way that I could have imagined it would be this rewarding and this amazing. Um, it's, it's, truly an amazing experience. I, Josh, watching him with them and I just, it's amazing. It's just amazing. That's all I can say. Um, so, okay. So let's see. Armor has rolled over to his side several times. Um, so I feel, and they do tummy time every single day, several times a day. Like usually after they're like 9am feeding ish around that time, I put them on their bellies and they do tummy time for a while until they fall asleep and take a little nap. Um, and they just, they coo and they make noises and they squeak and they are lifting their heads so high. And I just really feel like any day now, one of them is just going to roll right over and I'm going to be shocked. Um, so that's really, that's really awesome. They're, they're getting really, really strong. Um, so yeah, sorry, I thought I heard one of them. They're in there having play mat time right now. They're as I call it, talking to the sun. There's like this sun on the play mat and it sings and they get so excited when I put them underneath there. They just, ah, they, they get excited. Um, let's see. At night, they are sleeping anywhere from four to six and a half hours, which is absolutely amazing. Um, usually it's closer to the five, six range and occasionally they'll do four hours. It depends on what time they ate before they went to sleep. Um, so I am amazed. I am so grateful. They're eating about four ounces at every feeding, um, which brings me to breastfeeding. I am no longer breastfeeding. It, let's just say that um, going back to work at the very beginning of March really, really made me have a huge dip in my supply. And I took my pump to work and I pumped and it was kind of also hard too because at my job, you know, it's, I didn't sit at, I don't sit at a desk area. It's, I'm up on my feet. I'm busy. I'm interactive with people. And so it was kind of hard sometimes going and pumping and, um, it's just kind of hard to get away at the right time to do it and then to be gone and find a place to do it. And I just, ugh, you know, that was frustrating on top of the supply, like just taking a nosedive. Um, I was doing really well. I thought there for a little while I was having, you know, I was still getting them two bottles at, because there were, I was at three and then it was down to two bottles each a day. And I thought, you know, I don't care. I'm still going to give them this amount. It's still milk. And then when I went to work, like I said, 
And I, I mean, I did oatmeal, I drank tons of water, I made sure I was eating, I bought fenugreek, I was drinking mother's, mother's milk tea, and I just did not do anything for my supply. I don't know if it was the stress of going back to work that caused it, um, but then it was taking me like a couple days to get, it was taking me like two days to get a bottle each for them. And so um, at about two and a half months, so about two weeks ago, was it a week ago? No, it was about two weeks ago. I officially just, I packed up my pump and made the decision that I was done. Um, because it was, it was, it was, it was really depressing for me and very heartbreaking to know that I couldn't breastfeed them anymore and that I wasn't pumping enough for them. And it just it frustrated me. And, you know, it just, it makes me upset to think about it because you know, when you're pregnant and you think about what you're going to do for your baby and you think about how you're going to feed them your, you know, amazing milk and then having, it's hard whenever you have a hard time with breastfeeding. And I just really feel like I got off to such a rough start and um, that really set me back for feeding twins. Um, I should have pumped way more in the beginning at the hospital. I should have nursed them way more at the hospital. Um, but I got so concerned because they were so tiny or, you know, armor was so little and the doctors were like, you know, give them formula and it's not their fault. They didn't like shove formula down my throat or their throats, but I felt bad. I felt like I was doing something wrong. And so I decided to give them more formula in the hospital and I kind of fell on that. And then it made me not breastfeed as much in the very beginning. And that totally set me off. I mean, it, it set me back as far as being able to have enough supply. So now they're strictly on formula. But you know what? I've had, and I've had to accept this. You know, I, I online, my centering group, we have our private group still. So I, I contacted them and I told them um, that I wasn't breastfeeding anymore. And it was really devastating to me. It was sad and I was depressed about it. And they were really sweet. They, you know, said things like, you know, don't feel bad. But... It's just, you know, when you're surrounded by people who breastfeed their children and you want to do it so bad and then you, you can't keep up with it. It's just, it's sad. It frustrate, it's frustrating. Um, it made me feel like, like I didn't try hard enough or that I gave up too soon. I think that if I had not had to go back to work, it would have been easier to build the supply and get it to be better than what it was, but that wasn't my situation. So, uh, I'm, if we ever have another child, which we do kind of plan to possibly have another one, um, maybe when the boys turn two, we've kind of casually talked about trying for one more. I feel like I'm going to have a much better a grasp of what to do when it comes to breastfeeding in the very beginning because it really really truly honestly depends on what you do in the very first few days um, that is gonna determine your supply and how well you can breastfeed so um, again I'm not gonna feel I'm feeling better about it now but I just can't beat myself up I'm still feeding my children I'm I was a formula fed baby I'm fine I'm healthy so it's not like I didn't give them any milk. I did give them two and a half months of my milk and that's better than nothing, even though it makes me feel bad. <laughs> um, but I'm a good mom, so I'm not, I can't beat myself up about it, even though I feel bad. Um, so yeah, breastfeeding didn't go as well as I thought. And I, you know, the thing is, it's like, it's not that it's because it was twins. It's just because, I, like I said, I didn't get off to a good start. There are tons of twin moms out there who, who rock breastfeeding. And I am so inspired by those women and so amazed that they're able to do it. And like I said, if I didn't have to go back to work, I think that would have been really way better for me uh, in the breastfeeding department. So, and I am going to make a video. Sorry, I want to try to hurry up because this video is getting long. I am going to make a separate video on what it's like to be a working mom. Because I had someone on my, my Redhead Files page, um, Facebook page, ask me what it was like. Because I think that person is going to have to go back to work also. And so I am going to do a separate video on that. On what it's like to go back to work. Um, to be a working mom. Because it's tough. It is. I'm not going to lie. It's tough. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. I... 
as I'm feeling fantastic, I feel wonderful. I am going to start working on my fitness soon. I did join a little group. It was just, it didn't work out very well. Um, I joined this Biggest Loser group online and I did two weigh-ins and I missed a weigh-in. I didn't, well, I got, we got up one morning and we're really busy and by the time I realized that I was supposed to weigh in, I was already at work and I didn't get off work till 11 o'clock and I didn't realize the group had such strict rules. I truly never saw the rules. Like I was one of the first people to sign up and pay my money. So when I first signed up, it was like the rules were like all these comments, everybody's comments. And so that's kind of what I was like, oh, okay, you know, it's not that organized of a group. That's what I thought. I really thought that. Um, and so the the leader of the group um, posted on my my when I posted in the group you know oh I'm not gonna be able to weigh in tonight I'm gonna weigh in tomorrow she was like no you have to have it in by 11:59 I'm like oh crap I'm at work I I don't get off work till 11 o'clock so um, yeah so I got home and I posted my picture of my weight on the scale at 11:30 Central Time not Pacific not Eastern Standard Time and so the next morning. The ladies are, you know, arguing back and forth about whether or not it's fair that I should get to stay, and I, it really hurt my feelings. To be honest, it just hurt my feelings. I thought, you know, this is not a support, supportive type group, and I get it. It's a competition, and I get it. I broke the rule, um, you know, but had I not gotten and communicated with them like that day and said hey I'm at work I missed it I'm gonna get home at this time and post it I still weighed myself after eating and drinking all day long and like I said it started to turn into like a little bit of a drama fest and I do not deal well with drama I don't like to be a part of it and then all I could think was well if they do let me stay and continue on then everyone's gonna be looking at me and judging me oh she got special treatment and I just didn't want that so I posted a message saying I was bowing out and I removed myself from the group and I feel better about it. I cried all morning that morning. I felt so bad. I felt stupid. I felt embarrassed. I felt like I was causing drama and it was never my intention to do that. Um, you know, I just really, truly, honestly, I thought, you know, I st I posted my freaking picture, you know, come on. So I am done with that. I'm done with the group. Um, I wish everybody luck. I mean, I was really motivated and really excited to um, to lose weight with a group of people, but now I'm going to do it on my own, so next week I'm going to start. I've gotten, I have insanity. I was going to start it um, last week, but it was my birthday week, so I just decided not to. Um, but I have insanity, so I'm going to do that. And then um, I posted on Facebook if anybody in my area had a treadmill. So Josh is going on Friday to get me a treadmill. We have a friend that's going to sell it to us for fairly cheap. And so I'm going to start working on my fitness alone, on my own. And I'm going to lose weight. <laughs> um, and so I am going to do vlogs about my weight loss when that time comes. So I'm going to go ahead and let you go because I'm already at 18 minutes. Ah! Welcome back to my long ass vlogs. Um, so yeah, that's it. If anybody has any questions, leave them below. Um, and I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks. Bye.